Okay, so good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to this discussion for Physics 71. The topic for today is on graphical analysis of one-dimensional motion. The technique in solving graphical analysis is the same for uh, the position time graph and the velocity time graph. So there will be some additions just on the type of the graph that you're analyzing, but nonetheless, the methodology is still the same. Okay, so here's an outline of our discussion. So let's just review our position time and our velocity time graph. And then after that, we perform graphical analysis or we um, deduce the properties of the motion of an object based on the based on its position time and its velocity time graph. Okay, may tanong ba so far? May mga tanong ba so far? Okay, sige. So, kung wala namang tanong, okay, let's, pr let's proceed. Hi, Rene, again. <laughs> okay, so here are the objectives of this discussion. So, we analyze one-dimensional motion using verbal, graphical, and algebraic representations. So, so here, from um, usually one method is from the, we, we know the position as a function of time of the object and then you graph it. But now we do the reverse. Given the position time and the velocity time graph of an object, um, and or it can be velo just velocity time, it can be just position time. Uh, can you determine, for example, the velocity of an object at a particular instant in time? Or can you determine its acceleration at any given time? That's what we will be doing in this session. Okay, so recall, last lecture we discussed the following concepts. We discussed the following definitions. These are all kinematical variables that you'll be needing for the, re for the rest of the semester. Displacement, distance, your average speed, velocity, and acceleration, and your instantaneous speed, velocity, and acceleration. Now, the question is again, given a graph of the position time graph, or the velocity time graph, or let's say acceleration time graph, can you deduce or can you determine um, some properties of the motion of the object? And of course, the answer there is yes. And we do that using our graphical analysis. Okay? okay, but before that, let's recall how, um, what are the properties of the position time graph and what are the quantities that we can determine from the XT graph and the VT graph. Okay, ano yung mga yon? Kung naalala niyo from previous lecture, dun sa mga umattend ng lecture kahapon or dun sa mga nakapanood na ng video na in-upload ko kahapon. So here, um, here's just a recall. Uh, tinanggal ko animations para mabilis tayo. Remember here, if there are two points, um, if uh, if there are two points, then the slope of the line joining an x1, t1, and an x2, t2 is the average velocity from t1 to t2. So, halimbawa, tanungin kayo sa, sa exam, halimbawa, what is the average velocity, given this graph, what is the average velocity from this point to this point? What you just need to do is to connect the line, make a line joining um, these two points, and then determine the slope of that line. By determining the slope of that line, you are now sure of the average velocity of the graph. Okay? Is that clear? Malino ba to? This is just a recall. We will use these concepts or these ideas when we do our graphical analysis. Okay. Questions? May tanong ba rito? May mga tanong ba? Are there any questions? Wala naman? None. Okay. Sige. Thank you. So, and then... um. Recall also our instantaneous velocity. Kanina, we have our secant line. And then if we approach one of the points towards the other point, what we will get is the limit of that um, of the quotient of the displacement per unit time. And that will give us the slope of the tangent line about that point. And the slope of the tangent line about that point in a more physical sense is your instantaneous velocity. We will more explain more on the instantaneous velocity later. Uh, annoying relationship instantaneous velocity, okay, average velocity for some for some special graphs, they're equal, for example. Okay. And then after that, we also have our velocity time graph. The velocity time graph can give you many quantities. In fact, mas marami ka makakuha rito compared sa, well, almost the same din naman yung with the position time graph. Pero iba lang yung approach na makukuha mo. Like for instance, the acceleration, again, is the rate of change of velocity with time. And therefore, if you have two points on the velocity time graph, the slope of that line joining these two points is the acceleration, or I should say, the average acceleration of uh, of the uh, of the average acceleration of the graph from t1 from the initial point t1 to some final point t2. Okay, so yon, a average is delta v, 
delta t. Now, we can also do the same. We can, from the second time, we can also determine the tangent line about a point for the velocity time graph, and we will get like this. So uh, if we determine the tangent, the slope of the tangent line about uh, a point uh, about the point on the VT graph, uh, we will get the instantaneous accelerations, which is again your time derivative of your velocity or just the second time derivative of your position. Okay, may tanong ba rito sa ating recall? May mga questions ba sa recall na ito? May tanong ba? Are there any questions? None, sir. None. Okay, this is just a review of our discussion yesterday. Those who haven't watched it yet, please do so. Kailangan yung maintindahan yung topic na yon para at least these graphs for us, for para makasunod kayo sa gagawin natin today. Okay, again.